Hello, Phaedra and Moroni here from Noble Flowers, and today we're here to talk to you about... Corlita virus. Which we have in our cosmos. Unfortunately. We've had a really rough season. We've had weather problems, crop failures. We've had insect problems, weed pressure, and we've also had rabbits come in and eat a lot of our crops. And then the icing on top was we got curly top virus in our cosmos, and we've had to rip the entire lot out. Curly top virus is a viral disease that affects uh, obviously our cosmos, but also uh, is very common in tomatoes and beetroot as well. The Corita virus is transmitted by le leaf hopping insects. In this case, in our case, is uh, grasshoppers. You will know you have Corita virus when you see the tips of the plants curling like this. On our cosmos, the tips also bulge and go hard. They feel a little bit rubbery. Curly top virus will stunt the growth of your cosmos and cause deformities in the flowers and the foliage on your plants. And it'll generally just affect the health of your plant. Once you have curly top virus, you have to remove all the plants, which we've had to do in both locations. We had cosmos out in the flower field and we also had it in front of our flower shed and we've had to rip all of it out. After we pull the plants off the ground, we lay the bare rooted plants on, on the side of the row to let them dry. Uh, we did that because the heat here is pretty intense, which caused the plants to dry pretty quickly. But uh, if in lo the location that you are, it's not as hot and plants won't dry as quick and you are worried that the insect will feed from those uh, plants and hope into a different one, what you can do is cover the plants with plastic and secure the plastic with rocks or the heat that will generate for the, the composition and the sun will help the plants dry faster. And it will keep the insects off them while they're dying. After the plants are dead and they've dried up, you can then dispose of those plants by either burning them or putting them, like burying them in the compost and then the virus will slowly break down in the compost. What we did to treat the soil was to till the soil after we pulled the cosmos from the ground to expose the leftover roots of the cosmos to dry up from the heat of the sun. And what is recommended also is to till one week after this process to uh, re-expose whatever material may be alive so it can dry as well. After this, you can amend the soil and reincorporate some nutrients into the ground. And then you can plant another crop in there. We're choosing not to plant anything from the same family Unfortunately, Cosmos is from the Asteraceae family, the same as sunflowers, dahlias, asters, marigold, feverfew, cinnias, and all most important plants for cut flowers. Most of what we have growing out there. That would have been a disaster if uh, this virus has spread to other plants that we have in the farm. For that reason, we are keeping an eye very close into the plants were surrounded by this uh, cosmo plantation. And it takes around seven days for the virus to show up in newly affected plants. So we are keeping an eye on things. And we're also using those rows where the cosmos was to plant something from a totally different family. And we're thinking we'll probably put the basil and the baby's breath, gypsophila, in those rows, just to be sure. So why is the only treatment to rip this out? And there's two reasons. Number one is it spreads and it spreads fast. The insect, if it hops on the infected plant and then hops to another plant from that same family, it can infect other crops. And in those links below, one of them talks about how it only takes about 10 seconds for that insect to infect another plant. And it's just not something you really want to risk. The second one is your plants are not going to be healthy anymore. It really does deform the plant and the flowers and your fruits or veggies or whatever it is that you've got the infection in. So you're kind of left with no other reason than to get rid of it. For us as cut flower farmers, we sell our flowers to consumers, like we sell retail as a florist, and we couldn't really risk using these flowers anymore. And they, someone takes them home and then somehow an insect ended, ended up on it and then ended up in their garden and it spread the virus further off our property, which it could have done anyway, but it's just not something we're prepared to risk having happen. So they've no got way. to come out. To prevent colita of virus, insecticide will sound like the perfect solution to combat the virus. 
However, in our farm, we don't use insecticides. And one reason for that is that we are surrounded, surrounded by grassland and other farms where the main crop is grass, which will make very difficult for us to keep insects at bay. For that reason, we are to uh, try different methods to prevent coronavirus from happening. The, the main thing that you need to do is try to deter the insects by kind of ruining their habitat. Uh, we need to keep our grasses down around the flower field so they've got less habitat to live in. One of the strategies that we read about was the fact that insects don't like feeding on plants when they're in part shade. They prefer to feed in full sun. So you can plant these plants in part shade or shade, but Cosmos isn't going to do too well in full shade. So that's something that we thought we could try. And you can also use netting. Uh, the plants are going to get to a point of some stage where they can't be netted successfully anymore but it might get them through the early stages we hope this video have helped you we hope this doesn't happen to you but if you want to learn more about this there is more information link in the description and thanks for watching bye see ya